Hello there and welcome to uh, Norton live streams and our first live stream of 2023. So we've had a little break, uh, but now we're back uh, with a vengeance. Um, just apologies, first of all, for those who tried to join us on our live streams a couple of weeks ago. We had a bit of a, a snowstorm here in England about that much, and it brought the whole country to a standstill, so we weren't able to get in uh, on site uh, to do the live stream uh, here two weeks ago. So we've postponed it till... Uh, Till today, so I hope uh, you don't mind too much and you've managed to, to get online and, and join us and be with us for the next uh, half an hour, 35 minutes. Um, now, not only are we live today on Microsoft Teams, which is a platform we were using all of last year, but today we're also live on YouTube. So hello to uh, any viewers that have joined us uh, on YouTube uh, today. Uh, so today is the uh, first. Okay, so I'm just being told by uh, our director that at the moment we've got no audio on Teams, but for those of you on YouTube, I hope it's working and I'm not just making movements with my mouth as it will be for other people. Okay, so today it is the first of uh, six live streams that we have. Uh, we're doing going to be doing that every month until uh, July. We'll have a summer break and then we'll go on with our winter season or autumn season of, of live streams thereafter all the way up till, uh, till Christmas. Uh, if you have missed any of our past live streams, they are available on our YouTube channel for you to have a look at where there's all sorts of information, uh, the live streams and also lots of Ask the Expert videos where we cover loads and loads of different interests topics all about abrasives and the tools we use uh, with these products and how to tips and tricks etc so please have a look at our YouTube channel lots of content on there um, so today we're gonna, we're gonna go, 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 go it's always a good way to kick off uh, kick off the year and today we're going to be really back to basics and looking at our old friend the uh, the angle grinder so that's going to be the topic of uh, of the subject today. So um, normally at this point, we would put up uh, an agenda to show what we'd be going through uh, for the next half an hour, but we're having a few technical issues at the moment, uh, not able to put that screen on. So I'm going to do it. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. No, we have got it. Here we go. So uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Paul. I live in the center of England in Cheshire. Uh, I'm an application engineer for MRO, or basically metal fabrication, for the whole of EMEA. I've got 32 years in manufacturing and 20 years in the abrasive uh, industry. Okay, so let's see if we can have the agenda. Wow, it's here. Great. Thank you, Martin. Everything's starting to work by the look of it. Okay, so... Uh. What is an angle grinder is what we're going to cover first of all. We're going to have a the look then at the typical uses of this tool, of which there are many. Uh, we're then going to look at how you choose the right machine uh, for, for the job. Um, also, PPE, what, uh, what kind of uh, PPE you should be using when using these tools. Your safety considerations, because that is obviously number one, safety. And then going to look how to cut, how to grind, how to finish. And at the end, for those people that have joined us live and not watching this uh, recorded session on YouTube, we'll have a live uh, question and answer session for 10 minutes. So if, uh, if you've got any questions uh, through this stream, please just uh, pop them in the chat on the sidebar. Uh, and then at the end of that, we will come and uh, we can discuss that on a one-to-one on -one basis. So uh, please pop your questions in the chat when you can. Okay, so what is a right angle grinder? And I think one of the easiest ways to show you uh, what an angle grinder is to pick up a tool and have a look at it. Okay, so here we have it here. The reason we call this a right angle grinder or an angle grinder is because the spindle is actually 90 degrees, is set at 90 degrees to the motor. So we have the motor coming in this direction and the spindle is at 90 degrees to that motor. That's as simple as that. It really is uh, quite easy. You do see in the market uh, what we call straight grinders, where the motor and the spindle are in line. Uh, so that's why they're called a straight grinder. But when we set at 90 degrees, that's why uh, we call it uh, an angle grinder. So typical uses of this tool, I think the easiest way to show that is to put up what we call here at Norton the rag, uh, the rag wheel. So if Martin, if you could put up the, uh, the rag wheel on the slides for us. So when I've recorded talking to Martin, I'm not talking to my imaginary friend. Martin's a producer who's uh, behind the scenes uh, broadcasting all this out to your eyeballs. Okay, so here we go. Here's the rag wheel. So an angle grinder or a right angle grinder can be used for all of these different applications. So cutting, so when we're cutting one piece of material from, uh, from another, 
uh, grinding and stop removal, so using uh, the tool to remove great lumps of, uh, of material. It can be used for blending and refining, okay, so getting your surface finished something like, uh, like what it should be. It could be for uh, stripping and uh, 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 finishing, and it can actually also be used for polishing in, uh, in some extreme examples. So uh, this tool can be used for some really extreme heavy duty applications, uh, all the way through to some fine finessing such as, uh, such as polishing. So it really is a, an extremely uh, versatile tool. Okay, so, We'll have a quick look now at uh, the choice you have uh, when you're trying to choose the angle grinder for your job. So if you just cut to the side table here where I have all my tools, you can see there's quite a lot of choice uh, on these products. Uh, and that choice is really um, actually down to the size uh, of the product. Uh, so you can see here, these are all uh, right angle grinders but they're all specifically for, for different kind of jobs. We have at the low end of the scale here, a 100 millimeter or four inch grinder, all the way up to this, uh, what we call a nine inch grinder, 230 millimeter. So for, uh, again, for different things. So um, we have uh, 100 millimeters for, for yeah, really, really light applications and it's machined so small, you can hold it with one hand uh, with no issues. Uh, with that, and that's uh, quite favoured in a, a lot of countries because of its ease of use and its lightness, and it won't pull you about anywhere. But when you've got extreme heavy duty applications where you need to remove a lot of material, you need to be starting to look at a, a bigger angle grinder. And depending on the thickness of the material you're cutting or the lifetime you want of the disc uh, to last, it depends how big uh, you want uh, that product uh, to be. Um, you know, and also in the application where you can get this tool in. I mean, it's very difficult if you're a tight, a tight confined space to be using a tool like this. You probably prefer to stick in the middle here with a, with a five inch or 125 millimeter to grinder. Um, just a quick bit on machine power. So there is a lot of uh, different power uh, grinders in the market. Uh, you know, this one here at 100 millimeters down at 700 watts. Uh, whereas this big old beast in the middle here is about two and a half uh, kilowatts. So uh, you can see power varies a great deal with these tools. And again, if you have a high performance abrasive, there's no point in having a low power tool. You need something with a bit of decent, uh, decent juice in there. So uh, something with a bit more a bit more power. And talking about power, we are seeing a lot more people using uh, battery power these days uh, than we used to. Uh, batteries have come on a long way in the past uh, few years uh, before an angle grinder was killing a battery very quickly. But with new battery technology, we could see a lot of people are starting to use uh, portable battery machines. Very nice, very powerful for, for a battery machine, this one here. They're not cheap but uh, it's certainly really a uh, nice machine. And also you have a big advantage is the fact you only have a battery for this. You don't have one of these. I would always recommend that you use overalls to keep your, your, your yourself uh, uh, covered from any of the debris and the sparks and the dust that will be, be producing when uh, we're using this machine. And also my overalls are flame retardant. And that's really important because you're potentially going to be creating a lot of sparks when using a tool like this. So flame retardant overalls are an absolute must uh, for me when I'm using uh, using these. Uh, secondly, I've got my uh, safety boots on. I don't know if you can see them, big chunky boots. All right, so toe cap boots. Uh, some people may prefer metatarsal boots as well to protect uh, the bones in your foot as well. But uh, today I'm just using toe cap boots, but they're again, absolute essential to do. And always make sure your overall trousers are tucked over your boots as well. So you don't have any risk of any sparks or debris going into your shoe or through your socks. All right, it's a good, good tip for you there. Uh, secondly, is to protect your eyes. Okay, so you can either use uh, some safety glasses such as uh, these here, or something I prefer to use is actually a face mask. Okay, this wraps around all of your face and, and stops any possibility of sparks or debris getting in your eyes when you're using a tool like this. So uh, if you can wear one of these, I would, I would wholly recommend uh, to, to do that. Um, also your ears, make sure as you see here, I have some uh, ear uh, plugs in. Uh, these machines are loud, weigh over 100 decibels uh, when they're used. So using them for an extended period of time will be detrimental to your hearing. So really important to look after, look after that. Uh, and last of all, I would say would be um, if you were using one of these big machines, 
such as the uh, 230 millimeter, it's a monster, huh? You're gonna be creating a lot of sparks with this machine and they will be going everywhere. When I'm using a machine like that, I also like to incorporate a leather apron, okay? Just over the front of my body, just to stop sparks, debris and heat getting through to me because we really do create a huge amount of uh, sparks and debris with these uh, with these tools but a smaller tool like this is not so necessary because we can we can stand around the application you can move around where the spark trail is uh, is going and we'll show you a little bit of that uh, that later on so we're not going to be using this today but we can do if you you want to be extra protected okay so that's ppe done so and again we're still on safety now so uh, also we need to look at the area you're working in. Okay, so remember these things are creating a lot of sparks, a lot of heat. You want to have a look before you start grinding if there's any flammables in the area. So any pots of uh, flammable liquid, bottles of liquid spray or anything like that, cardboard boxes, whatever it may be. Just have a look around the area where you're working to check there's no packaging or anything that could be combustible that could catch fire from uh, from your spark trail because when you're grinding it may not catch fire but when you've walked away uh, and the sparks are still yeah, fizzing away in the corner it could set fire uh, at any point so clear the area of anything that could cause you a problem uh, with uh, with a fire risk or any flammable materials okay so I think it's time we get on to some applications. Uh, so the first application we're going to look at today is cutting with an angle grinder. And in front of me here, I've got uh, a few different cutting discs. Uh, and we'll concentrate on one, uh, which is our Quantum, uh, Quantum 3 product. If we can just uh, get on the vice there, Martin. Or maybe not, I can hold it. Ah, ooh, uh. Okay, so our Quantum 3 product. Okay, so this is the disc we're going to be using for, for cutting today. It's a 125, again, matching the size of your grinder because it's a 125 grinder we're using today. So always check to match uh, uh, the speed of uh, your, your, the size of your tool and the right speed. Uh, it's our full ceramic quantum free, so it's a really high performance cutting disc we're going to be using. Um, so we're going to cut um, a bit of carbon steel today. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much about uh, when you're cutting carbon steel. But if I was cutting stainless steel, I want to make sure the pictograms on the disc here show that it's suitable for inox as well as carbon steel. You see here we've got the sign for carbon and the sign for inox. So I know I've got uh, the right disc for, for the job if I was to cut stainless steel. But again, carbon steel today, it doesn't really matter so much. OK, so um, first tip is how do we mount the uh, disc onto the machine? OK, so here's your grinder. Here's where the disc goes. And here are what we call the flanges. OK, so I'll take off the top flange. I'll put that down there for now. And I'll take the cutting disc up. OK, some people ask, which way round do we go? Do we go black side down or label side out? To be honest, it doesn't really matter. You can use it either way. It's just whatever preference you have. I prefer it so I can see uh, the label on there to see what product I've got on. It just uh, makes me feel uh, better. I don't know why. So we always leave the back flange on. Oh, important to never remove that when you're using a cutting disc. We place that over the top of there so it's snug onto the uh, onto the back flange. And then we get the top flange and we can then uh, ooh, screw that on top. But also make sure that we have the raised hub of the disc. You can see that uh, here, guys, uh, facing outwards. So that wants to be facing outwards when we tighten this uh, uh, disc onto the grinder. OK, one thing I forgot actually to show you when, when we're doing this before you actually mount a disc, I'll show you that with another disc. If you just stay on that. Oh, OK, um, is is good to check uh, before you mount a disc that it's in date. All right. That's really important to, to get that. So on this centering, we have what we call a validity date. OK. So that is uh, put on there on the date of manufacture. And you'll have a year on here. I think this one here is 2025, it says on here. So this, is, this disc is OK to be used until two 2025. And it says uh, V07. So that means the seventh month of the year. OK, so it's, uh, by the time we get to uh, July, this disc in 2025, this disc shouldn't be used anymore. So always check your discs are, uh, 
are valid. Also, a good point to do is check the condition of your disc before you put it on the tool as well. Is there any damage on the periphery of the disc, any cracks? So give your disc a quick check over, first of all, just to make sure it's as it, uh, as it needs to be. Uh, once you've done that, the machine is in good order, your disc is in good order, you've got it mounted correctly, you've got your safety gear on, it's time to do some cutting. All right, so here we have some, uh, a bar of carbon steel. It's about uh, 10, 12 millimeters wide by about uh, 30, uh, 30 thick. And we'll get that in the vise uh, so we'll, before we cut. Important when you're putting a, product, a, a component in the vise such as this is don't cut with the component sticking out like here, okay? If you cut with the component sticking out like here, you'll get a lot of vibration in the cut because there'll be flex in the material, okay? So if you're doing a cut, Always stay as close to the clamp as you possibly can. So move your component in and try and get as close to the clamp as you possibly can. Obviously, you want to be able to cut through and not be hindered by the vise, you know, so you don't want to be crashing into this vise here. So this kind of length is, is, is more than acceptable to be looking at when you're, when you're, when you're cutting. OK, so um, holding the machine when I'm cutting. I'm a right-handed guy. Normally, I'll have my left hand on here, my right hand on the machine. Uh, but for, for today, for cutting, I will actually change my hands round. I'll use my left hand on the back of the machine and my right hand on the machine itself. I see a lot of people cutting like this, and all the spark traders spraying right down on their, on their legs. It's going right down here onto their legs. But what I'm going to do when I cut, I'm going to stay to the side. OK, so I've got a good view of what's going on in the cut. And I also don't get myself covered in sparks. It's a really nice way to, to cut. and I'm not burning my, uh, my nice expensive uh, overalls. So let's give you a quick example of that. I'll get on my uh, face shield. I'll plug the machine in on and turn it on. Yep, yeah, we're good to go. And uh, let's do a cut. So as you can see, pretty fast to get through that piece of steel. And I'm, I wonder if you notice when I'm cutting, I'm not just standing still and keeping the grinder in one place. I'm oscillating. So I'm moving the disc uh, up and down over the cutting area. This helps me cut through the material a bit quicker. It also reduces the arc of contact inside the material too. What that does is, is one, it gets me through quicker, but also it reduces heat buildup. So if we have a look at the, the segment of material that I've just cut, there's no burning or bluing or blacking on there because I'm, well, for one, it's a high performance disc and we can cut through really quickly. But secondly, it's, uh, uh, we're oscillating, so we're moving the contact area. So there's a less smaller, uh, there is a smaller arc of contact, therefore less uh, less friction in the cut, and you get a much cleaner cleaner cut by uh, by doing that. So uh, yeah, it's it's a really nice product to 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 cut with this. Also, when you're cutting, you must make sure you're never cutting at an angle either. Okay, so always be cutting at 90 degrees on your component. It's really really important to to do that. Um, also, pressure. I mean, yeah, you could push this disc a little bit, but really, if you put pressure in the cut, for one, you're going to lack of control. Okay, so you're not controlling the, the machine or the disc properly. Uh, you're, you're pushing too much. You should just really let the abrasive do, uh, do the work. Okay, so don't push too much. Just let the abrasive do the work and cut through and just control the position and, and the way your, where your machine uh, is. Also importantly, when you're going through a cut like this, as I say, keep it to 90 degrees. Always look and check that you're cutting down in a straight line. These things are not great at going round corners, so we must make sure we keep a, a cutting line. We never try to flex the disc in a cut and cut through there at an angle. So we always keep uh, in a straight line. Really, really important, that is. Right, let's have another example of cutting so you can see exactly what I was talking about uh, just then. So again, nice straight cut. And as you can see there, again, absolutely no burn on the, uh, on the steel, okay? 
Okay, that was a whirlwind on, uh, on, on cutting. One thing I didn't mention actually is the guard. When we're cutting, we have to set the guard at an angle for a specific angle for cutting. Okay, so if I was grinding, I would have the guard at that angle. Okay, so kind of uh, 180 to the actual body of the machine. But because I'm cutting, uh, that, if I was cutting with the guard like that, it's going to get in the way. I'm going to start clashing on the material with the guard, and that's going to affect the way I can effectively cut. But what I got to do when I, what I really do when I cut is I adjust the guard slightly at a different angle to be able to, to do that. So if you have the guard at this angle here, if you can see it on the video, just slightly offset. That will make it much easier for you to cut and the guard will not hinder your, hinder your process. It also, when I'm using the disc, the sparks will be going around and they'll be coming in this direction back at me. This part of the guard here is going to protect my finger here when I'm holding it. If we put the guard at an angle like, uh, like here, for example, here, um, it's actually going to, all the dust, all the sparks are going to hit my finger, burn through my glove and uh, melt my skin. So not ideal. So optimal guard position is really, really important. So there it's perfect for, for doing your, uh, your cuts. Okay, so enough about cutting now. We'll quickly uh, move on to uh, grinding uh, with, uh, with this, uh, this product. First thing to do is get the component in, uh, in the vise. So here we have uh, a lump of uh, stainless steel with some, uh, some weld on it, I think you can see here. So what I'm going to show you is how best to grind on, uh, on this product and how best to remove material uh, quickly and efficiently. So grinding is much different than cutting, much more aggressive application. There'll be a lot more sparks in there as well. Get that in there nice and, oh, maybe not nice and tight. Hold on one second. It's difficult to do. I need three hands for this. Okay. Here we go. I'll get that really nice and tight in the vise because we're going to be putting some pressure on, on here. Okay. Okay, machine's power is switched off. So it must always switch off the power of your machine before you start uh, mounting or demounting an abrasive, uh, abrasive disc in here. Okay, so now we get onto the grinding disc. Okay, so this is a T27 grinding disc. Again, uh, look at your validity date. So we can mount this in almost the same way as we would do a cutting disc, but this time with the flange that we have uh, here, we, uh, we actually want to reverse the flange. So it's before we had the flange on this way around, but now we've got a grinding disc on, we want the flange on, we want this castellation or the ridge part of the flange to be inside uh, the bore of the, of the disc. Okay, so we'll put that on there. We will uh, tidy it up nicely. Okay, so now we're ready to go. So reverse the flanges, we're all ready to, ready to go. Okay, so when we're grinding, we want to be using uh, a different angle. You see a lot of people using these products at uh, a very shallow angle. It's not correct. When you're grinding to make it maximum aggression, we want it to be at 45 degrees. 30 to 45 degrees is where you're going to get the best from, from the tool, the most aggression. Again, if you go like this, the contact area is too big, and therefore it will take you a long time to get through uh, the, the weld or the material you want to remove. So. Steepen the angle, you'll get it done much, much uh, quicker by doing that. Set the guard as well. This guard is set for cutting right now. So let's move it around again for grinding. Okay, that's now 180 degrees to the body of the machine and it's not going to get in my way. Um, stick the power on. This is a good idea. Okay. So again, angle is all important with grinding. So we want to be using 45 degrees and let's put some pressure on now. When you're grinding, we want to get the material removed as quick as possible, so it's time to push, uh, push a little bit. So let's give you an example of, uh, of that. So as you can see there, a very efficient tool at taking off material. It's taken off that weld uh, really, really quickly, but it's left quite a, quite a rough finish. So this kind of tool is absolutely ideal for, for those of you. I think I'll show you the finish a little bit more in the camera if I could take this out of the vise. So you see that it's the finish. It's taken the weld off, but it's quite a, quite a coarse finish. 
Yeah, absolutely ideal if you have no regard for the surface finish at all. Uh, so if you just want to get off from material as fast as possible, this is the uh, the best uh, the best product. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the best product for you to do that. If, however, you wanted to do the same application as that, and you wanted to respect the surface finish a little bit more, then a grinding disc probably isn't the the tool that you would want to use. Instead of that, you would use probably a uh, flap disc like this or a fiber disc uh, like this. Okay, they do the same job as a grinding disc. They're designed to remove material uh, as quickly as possible, but they're a little bit kinder to your surface finish. So let's have a quick look at how they uh, work on the angle grinder as well. So I'll just take this one uh, off. Okay, we put that down back where we got it from, a nice quantum three. And uh, I'll tell you what today, we're short of time a little bit. I'm just looking at where we are on time. We've got not so many minutes uh, left. We'll actually just use one of these products. We'll go for the fiber disc today rather than both. Very similar way to, to use these, uh, these products, but a fiber, we have to do a few other things. So I think it's best we have a look at that rather than the, the flap. Okay, so fiber discs, you can see they're very thin. They're made of uh, a vulcanized cloth, all right? Uh, so you can see they're quite flexible. So one of the key things we must do when we use a fiber disc and when we're mounting that on the machine is we use what we call a backup pad. Okay, so really important when you're using your disc, you must use a backup pad with a fiber. Uh, so yeah, with your fiber, really, really important. When I mount this on the angle grinder, I want to take off the back flange, okay? So always take off the back flange. The reason I want to do that is because if I leave the flange on, the disc will sit proud of the guard, okay? So it's going to be slightly above. You see where the guard is there? It's not sitting inside. But if I take off the back flange, there we go, put that down there, and I put the disc on, you can see now it's sat nicely inside the guard. So any debris that we're producing when we're grinding is dealt with with the guard, and that will take the dust away. So if you're using these products and you get covered in dust and sparks, Take your back flange off, it'll be much, uh, much easier for you. Right, so here we have the tool here. Uh, we have a special uh, a nut or flange nut that comes with uh, a fiber disc. It normally comes with a, with a backing pad. Uh, so we mount this on, obviously abrasive side out. It'll work much better with the abrasive side out than in. Push your top flange through the disc, and then we can simply mount that onto, onto your angle grinder. So really, really simple to put on there. Again, use the locking nut to lock it into place and we are good to go we're nice and tight on there okay so uses of a fiber disc same as a grinding disc like i say just a little bit kinder to the surface angle of uh, grind is very different however you saw with the the grinding disc i'm at 45 degrees but now with either a flat disc or a fiber disc as we're using here that angle needs to be shallower, okay? Of course, we can use 45 degrees, but what we'll do is we'll burn the edge of the disc really quickly and it'll stop working, okay? So let's get this down at a more reasonable angle of 10 to 15 degrees and it will work a hell of a lot better. All right. Right, I'll show you how quickly yeah, that can work. Power back on and we'll do some grinding. Just note how quick this is as well. So a fiber disc will do a, the job of removing material much quicker than a grinding disc. However, it will not last as long. Okay, so let's have a look how it works. So I think you can see for that, I did twice the length of the grinding disc almost. And if we have a look at the surface finish there, okay, so this was with the, uh, this was with the fiber disc. You can see it's a much better surface finish than what we did with the grinding disc. Okay, so for long life applications, where you want the disc to last a long time and no regard for the surface finish, you can't beat the Quantum 3 uh, uh, T27 grinding disc. Really good at its job. Uh, very aggressive, but if you actually have some regard for the surface finish, you need either a, a fiber disc like we're here or, or a flap disc used at a more shallow, uh, shallow angle. Okay, so uh, 
really important on your product choice said depending what the end application of uh, of this material is and what the customer requires so product choice all uh, all important there okay so i'm a little bit aware of time we're going to move on to the last step now uh, which is uh, how to finish essentially all right how we get a nice uh, finish on your stainless uh, stainless steel this time Carbon steel, we don't see such a, a huge requirement of uh, finishing on carbon steel such as this. And the reason is carbon steel is generally always painted to protect it from corrosion uh, later on uh, when it's in application. But stainless steel generally is not painted. So we really do see the surface of stainless steel a great deal more than we would do on a, on a carbon steel. And how we, uh, how we actually condition that is uh, with uh, our non-woven products, okay? So these are uh, non-woven products. So for example, this product here, which is our Vortex uh, Rapid Blend, nice unique grain in here, which will help us remove all the scratches we see on this component here and damage that it's seen uh, in, its, in its service life. There's lots of little scrapes and scratches all over the surface here, which makes it look uh, not so nice. And these products are able to take that uh, them scratches out and give us a really nice, uh, nice uniform, uh, uniform finish. Right. So how do we mount these uh, unitized? This is a unitized disc. How do we mount these on the tool? Again, let's put our back flange back on, lock it into place. Disc on there uh, just sits on the ridge of the back flange and then we can tighten them up. OK, a little bit tricky sometimes because the hole in here is quite small. Uh, so we have to be a little bit careful when we Tighten that up, got it into place now. Just check it for out of round, no problem at all. Got it mounted correctly in the machine. Again, with the guard, we can keep that uh, at the same position as we use for grinding because we're kind of doing the same thing, but just being a little bit more gentle to it. Now, one of the key things on this machine is this has got a speed variator. So when I'm using these kind of products, it's all about the finish. It's not about, uh, you know, removing lots of material as fast as possible. So what I'm going to do, what I recommend, if possible, you buy a speed variator on your grinder and we could turn the speed down a little bit. So I'm going to turn this down to number four, which is about 8,000, 7,000 RPM, just to, so I'm producing less heat in here. If I produce too much heat, I'll melt the disc. It's as simple as that. So let's take it down. Uh, and be a bit nicer to the surface, a bit more gentle. Uh, so 10 to 15 degrees. And with these products, I'm just using the weight of the machine. I'm not pushing. And you'll hear that from the machine note when I'm, uh, when I'm using it. I'm just letting the machine do the job. So really keeping it, uh, keeping it nice and, uh, and light. All right, let's do some grinding. No, grinding, finishing, should I say. Turn on the power. I'd have to forget that once in the stream, of course. All right. Now, I think you can see the finish we've got on there is quite nice, actually. So we've gone from this kind of matte uh, finish here to quite a high shine uh, on there. OK, so whether you notice when I was using uh, that product uh, in uh, on this machine, going quite slow. OK, and that's because I'm trying to impart a finish on there. If you're if you're uh, if you're using this machine in a, in a quick success, a quick uh, ac action like this, you will actually make the surface finish work, work, make the surface finish a lot worse. Let me just give you a quick example of that. Okay, so same product, same machine just a different uh, action. You can see here where I was going quickly, we can see all what we call fish scaling. See all the, all of the, the lines where the disc is rotating past. It doesn't look so great. Okay. That's not a nice surface finish, but on this part of the, the, the component here, I was going nice and slow and finishing on the backstroke. And that's how we get a good finish uh, with an angle grinder, light pressure, nice and slow gives you a perfect finish uh, every uh, every time. 
Okay, so I think we've run out of time here today. In fact, I've gone a little bit over on time. I do apologize, I get quite excited uh, talking about these uh, tools and machines. Uh, but uh, just to summarize, the right angle grinder, it's an it's a extremely uh, versatile machine, a machine as, as you can see. We can go all the way from cutting, grinding, really heavy duty, hot, sparky, smelly, noisy operations, all the way through to fine finishing. We can even polish with this product at the end using some compound and get a mirror finish. It's really, really a versatile tool. And it's probably one of the most common tools in our marketplace today, either at home or definitely in industry. It's absolutely everywhere. Anybody making anything from uh, steel will use a tool uh, such as an angle grinder. So that's why it's a really important tool to uh, to all of us here and certainly me here at Sangaban, my, my, uh, my favorite one. Okay, so that's the end of uh, today's live stream today, but I just want a quick message to everybody out there. If there's something you'd like us to cover here on Norton Live, if there's a topic you think would be interesting for us to do, please let us know. We're open all ears to, to listen to your suggestions. If there's a commonality with uh, requests, we'll certainly consider it for one of our future live streams. So please give us your suggestions of what you'd like to see us uh, cover on here. Okay, so for those of you watching live, please stick around for the Q&A at the end of the session. But for those of you watching recorded on our YouTube channel, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, so we normally have a nice little rock and roll graphic there to introduce the next uh, session for you guys who are watching live. But today, it's not working. But uh, never mind, that's live TV for you. That's uh, how it happens. Uh, so we'll go on to the Q&A this morning. I think we've covered everything pretty well, but are there any questions out there? Uh, Martin. Hi, Paul. Um, yes, we have had a question from we've got a uh, question. Peter. From? Uh, uh, Peter. Yeah? What did uh, Peter want to know? He wanted to know, do you, well, is it a good idea to use the tool that comes with your Agon Grider to tighten the discs up? Okay, yeah. Um, that's a good question. So I'm not sure if the, you, people can hear Martin on the stream. Can they hear you, Martin? You can. Okay, so you did hear that question. So yeah, good question from Peter. I mean, it, it is a good practice to use the tool to tighten it up. But when you're using these tools day in, day out, um, you get very experienced with them. And I, I don't necessarily need to use the tool. I know exactly how tight to tighten this product. It really is uh, stiff. Sometimes when you use the tool, you could over tighten these products. So hand tight is is more than more than good enough. It, it's, it's extremely secure cure the way it is. I tighten this just as tight with uh, with my hands as I would do with, with a tool. Also, even on these products like the Unitize, it's quite difficult to get the tool in there to tighten it in the first place. Also, remember when this disc is actually spinning, it's self-tightening anyway. Okay, so it does actually tighten up on, on the flange. As long as you've got a good grip on, a uh, good nip on there in the first place, it will self-tighten as it's spinning. So uh, yes, of course, use the tool, but for experienced operators, we're not using these tools. Uh, we're using our hands just to grip them up with a locking nut. But yeah, good question, yeah. Anything else there, Martin? Uh, that's everything. That's it today, wow. Yep. Wow, we must have uh, answered those questions pretty damn well today, so I'm happy. Uh, Happy for that. Okay, so uh, everybody watching live, if uh, don't forget we're on YouTube as well as Microsoft Teams. So if you prefer to use YouTube, it's a lot easier to log in and have a look at the video on YouTube. Please do so uh, for the future events. Uh, next week or two weeks away from now, we'll be covering hand pads. So uh, non-woven uh, Bertex hand pads and the uses and the joys of these uh, little wonders. Uh, so I uh, hope you could join us in a couple of weeks time uh, on the Friday. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.